Currently, I'm going to be showing you the uh, Touch UI interface, which is a prototype interface of the Viper. Um, going through the steps, it is a wizard-based approach. Provides you a PIN number, which you actually need to know clearly, but which will also indicate what type of, of credentials and functionality you can actually uh, access directly from the unit. If I dial in one, two, three, and four, it's going to give me access to a username and password. Username and password, if I key in my name, Louis, if I can still spell my name, right? And if I key in my password, IBC, get in. It provides me right away my functionality, which are stream and record and review and publish. Depending on who I am, probably I would just have stream and record only. Or maybe I would just have review and publish. Or I could just have record or stream. It really depends on the credentials that your administrator will set for you. In this case, I'm going to do go to the stream and record. It's going to provide me a screen, it's calling the start session screen, with three choices. Inputs, metadata, and the lead-in. On the inputs, it allows me to actually select what type of uh, video input I want to put into my encoders. There are two of them, one, encoder one and encoder two. I select my inputs. In here, I'm given a choice that ranges from DVI, digital, analog, to S-Video, BNC Composite, and 3G SDHD. I'll use a BNC Composite source in this case. The second encoder, same thing again. I have access to other sources. I'll go with DVI. And on the audio side, I also have different inputs that I can use. So phono stereo. Once this, is, once this is done, I apply, and I move back to my metadata input and metadata screen. Metadata-wise, it's all, rela all related to title, description, dates, department, case number. The title, descriptions, and dates are standard part of your uh, metadata fields. Department, case numbers can be extended to additional fields that are relevant to your customer's requirements. Once this is selected and done, I can go to what we call a lead-in. Lead-in essentially is to give you a head of, um, head of time information when your session is about to start. You see here on the left side a series of stills that have been uploaded into the unit that you'll be using for uh, either titling the information of the session that you'll be you are about to broadcast. On the right side, a series of times that are being either predefined by us or you that you'll select 15 minutes ahead of time or in 30 minutes things are going to start. Or in the case that none of those functions, you'll have a uh, customizable duration field to actually enter the proper duration. Apply this. All my inputs, metadata, and lead-in have been set. Apply again. And now this email, email me this URL, basically is telling me that whoever I'm going to email the, the URL to will have access directly to the, the, the output feed of that unit. I confirm it. Email has been sent. Start. Now I get into the actual the meat of the matter. Stream and record. What is really interesting into this field is that you have stream and record which are independent from one another. So instead of having uh, streaming and recording tied with each other, then you can actually key in your stream by itself. So you're broadcasting as it goes. You can decide that now a little later on you'll be recording. And as you're recording, you say, well, probably I would rather not stream a specific section of the operation or the event which is going on. You'll stop it, and your record will still go on. And you can go back and stream, and you can start that, decide that your recording is done, but you still want to be able to broadcast your content all the way through. As you're recording, on the left side, you have what you, you already know, which is hot marks. But in this case, you'll have predefined hot marks you'll be able to entitle by yourself. Those hot marks will be inserted in real time into the record piece, and you'll be able to actually select the one that you want to that you, that is relevant to the moment in time that you're doing your recording. Once the recording is done, you get into a mode that is asking you to either finish and review, or just finish a session, or return to the session. If I go into finish and review, it brings me to a review recording mode, which has 
It's giving, basically it's a review of the content you just recorded. The hot marks that you will have inserted all the way through uh, will be made available for you. You'll be able to select a hot mark, and as you can see, the little um, um, triangle fetching icon that goes back and forth through the index, the index hot marks, is going to seek through it. So instead of having to search for a specific point in time, the hot mark indicator will actually bring you to the right time, where the right time of the piece that you want to review from. Once you're done, you publish it. Publish then provides you a new screen called Destinations. And in this case, uh, you'll have either preset information that will have been put ahead of time by the administrator. And or you can decide that you want to modify these, these fields and enter other specific informations. The presets, by in this case, are really all about user, uh, the groups, the users you want to send the information to, and really relevant to LDAP and Active Directory. If the information is right for you, you can publish it. And the session tells you that recording title has been published to the selected destinations. <coughs> if you still want to review more than just what you recorded, you go to Review and Publish, which actually tells you, get, provides you a screen with all the recorded information inside of the unit. So as I'm going through, you can see on the right side the equivalent, uh, the, the icons of the, uh, the picture icons of the content that was recorded inside of the unit. The more you have, the more information you'll get. You can also see that you have uh, information related to the title, description, duration, and the date. You can toggle that view in from a list view to a thumbnail view. So instead of just giving you some information, it provides you additional information in there. Once you're done, if you want to review from here, you select the icon and it gives you exactly the same thing, the same selection that you had made beforehand. You can publish that content once again, depending on uh, the requirements that you have. And that wraps it up for this section of the demonstration. Go back to the home screen. Now moving along. The screen that we have right now, it's uh, the second unit is the actual working unit, uh, that the prototype that we brought from Montreal. Um, as you can see in here, I've already made my selections, my video inputs. I'm taking a feed from a, a component HD camera, and I'm also taking a feed uh, from my computer output. So first and foremost, I was talking about uh, uh, and I'll be, I'll be very clear, also the layout is a, is a little bit different than the actual uh, the UI you just saw a few minutes ago. Uh, the UI, the previous UI, will be the final one. This is just a, like I said, a prototype in this case. What the interface provides you with is the ability to monitor directly from the screen. So if you don't have a monitor handy next to you, you can select, touch the, the, uh, the image and it's going to blow it up for you. Same thing goes for the second input. So you can validate the content that you are being about to actually stream or record. Yeah, what's called a picture-in-picture -picture mode. If I can take it, picture-in-picture. -picture. Sorry, picture. Picture-picture not working. Okay. So picture-in-picture uh, -picture essentially just gives you a picture-in-picture uh, -picture mode. What we'll do now is I talked about the fact that we had streaming and recording separately, one one from another, one from another. I'm going to dial in my stream. Now, um, probably I'm going to ask you to pan because the proof is in the pudding. And now I'm currently streaming directly into the interface of InStream that is being seen on the computer output in here. So if I, if I actually stop it, I'm going to pause it. Now it's paused, and if, you, and if you pan back to the computer camera, computer wall, you can see that now the image is actually is frozen, so we're not streaming anymore. While the the view on the touch panel view of the Viper, you still have the live feed going on. So then, what you do is you can start your streaming, like I said beforehand, and you can also start your recording. Now I'm actually streaming and recording at the same time. The second input, which is the computer input, 
I'm going to start my slides. And you'll see the screen move back into its play mode. And now I'm actually recording and streaming at the same time. So if you move back to the, the interface of the Viper, if I key in the source, you can see that the selections are being fed by what is coming out of the, the animation of the PowerPoint. And probably now, my picture-in-picture -picture works, or maybe it doesn't. So next time around. <laughs> Again, selecting the screens. Once I'm done, I just hit the done button and it will, if you just monitor that screen here, it's going to go into a publishing asset, which what it does, it sends over, and if you can move back to uh, the computer screen, within the video portal of the Viper that, you, that is familiar to you today you'll see the video asset will be published. So I'll need to refresh my page. Takes about 30 seconds to actually publish the content. So I have to refresh and refresh. There we go. So I've recorded for about a minute worth of content. If I launch it. Now you have the view, the VOD that we had and you'll notice that in a few seconds the animation is going to start on the right so I'm just going to toggle back and forth to show you that the content is coming now it's fading in it's fading out so very easy very simple a few buttons nothing complicated it's a wizard approach way just make sure that people don't have to take a manual and and have to learn for five hours how to actually handle the unit and the device so as I said at the beginning of the presentation, uh, the interface of the Viper is really intended to be a step-by-step -step approach. So it's a wizard-based approach. Um, what is important for us is that people don't have to pick up a manual to actually know how to use the machine. Um, the point being that it's an out-of-the-box experience and that within 20 minutes of use, you should be able to actually use the machine. It's, uh, it's one thing to provide the performance that the box can actually provide you with, but it's another thing to actually use the machine. And we want to hear more about the fact that it's easy to use and simple, and on top of that, it's a great machine. So thank you very much. I'm Louis Girardin, once again, Viper Product, product Line Manager. Email me, any questions, my pleasure. See you in another, in another trade show. Bye.